Deep bones to die for and a dandyish dress sense that made every guy want to be him and girls want to date him. 30 years on, Pop's Prince Charming is back and about to stand and deliver with his first tour in 15 years. Welcome to you. you. It's lovely, lovely to have you on the show. What, what, what does it feel like when you see the video, you see all the, all the crowd cheering? It's, it's your first interview for, what, 15 years talking about yeah, your music? Yeah, about good? music. Um, it's consistent. I've always sort of shown off. So. <laughs> <laughs> so what sort of things can people expect on the tour? <clears throat> uh, well, all of the songs that they've heard, I'm just really going to play um, our repertoire of songs and a mm -hmm. few covers and maybe one or two new things from the new album. And the, the name of the tour is the the, the Blue Black Hussar mm -hmm. tour. Where would you yeah. get that name from? Oh, uh, well, that's the it's a sort of character as if the character of the stripe has sort of died. Okay. And, well, not died, not gone to Moscow and walked back in the snow like they did, you know, in the Napoleonic Wars. And what would he be like 33 years later? And okay. uh, but he's the Terminator. You can't actually kill him. And uh, so it's that. It's that guy coming back and um, the blue black. The album. The album's called Adamant. It's the That's blue very black. Very complicated. Yeah, it's yeah. Yeah. It's called it's Adamant on tour. Gonna <laughs> 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 take you off the concert that to explain be, that. It'd be too easy. <laughs> it won't be too easy. You but don't it's do anything It's also very miles. shrewd because it is. It it's is too later easy. on. You're not the same person. Yeah, that I'm you not. Were I couldn't be. There. I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I'm not trying to be either because I think that's rather embarrassing. I enjoy. I was a boy then. I'm a man now. Yeah. Well, I became a man when Mark delivered me daughter. How old is she now? Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. So will she be at the? Will she be in the audience? Possibly, but she prefers jazz. She plays the saxophone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Your adamant character. Where did? Mm. Where did it? How did it come about in the beginning? Uh, well, my favourite subject at school was art and history, right. and uh, it still is. I love. I love both of those. But really, just Roxy music, uh. Bolan, uh, you know, the, the, all the glam thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, before that, growing up listening to my mum's dad's records, you know, Elvis and, and Gene Vincent. And really, I just love those people. And there's always been that constant sure. reference. I never, you, but you can't go wrong with Elvis. I mean, you can't beat Elvis, really. Oh. And Sinatra. <laughs> and then, um, so there's always someone done it better than I'll ever do it. But yeah. were you, um, obviously, you grew up listening to all of that music, mm. but then you found your own whole mm. own image that no one had had before or has had since, you know, with all the makeup and. Well, you go through a period of imitation, mm. I think. You know, trying things out when you're in a band, you're doing other people's songs, and that's mm. important. Mm. And then there's that day where you do a song and, and it's, yeah, all right, I think yeah. I've got it. And then you go. And how do you it. feel about people imitating you? Because, you know, it has to be said the, the whole Johnny Depp thing in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. It was yeah. so it's time. very he looks very like like you. Stolen you. Of a Are rap you... scallion. <laughs> no, he's, uh, well, Johnny Depp's, uh, he acts like a pirate. I am a pirate. You know, I've always been a pirate. <laughs> And yeah. uh, you know he does a good job, you know. And I, 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 but you know when he when he gets a bit, you know, tired, I think I'd have a crack at that. I'd love to. Yeah. Do that. Yeah, really? But I don't know. I got time. But... What was it? What do you feel like being a pop star in those days? Because I was making loads of TV programs mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. punk, and that's mm -hmm. when we met mm -hmm. all those years you ago. You interviewed, you interviewed the Sex Pistols, didn't you? Yeah, and, like and, and then and I. And all that yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. I mm -hmm. did all those films mm -hmm. with them, and then you came off the back of that. You were mm -hmm. much more romantic. Mm -hmm. I mean, because uh, punk was so threatening, and you were just much. More fun, I think. Well, by the time people saw it, it was, but I'd had sort of three years. We started in like 76, yeah. and we were one of the bands that, because the music wasn't punk, it wasn't sort of four chords, and I was writing about different things. And we were very much vilified by the, the music press because um, the type of music and the look. And so we had to go to Europe and play. Mm. But I did probably 300 gigs before I went on top of the pops, and then it, bang. So I had a long time 
Did you find it really hard to cope with all the pressure? I mean, I heard you on the radio last week mm -hmm. talking about, you know, you may, you've been on quite a journey, haven't yeah, you? You've yeah, been, yeah. you know, you've been out of music. <clears throat> when I first met you, you were very keen on painting and everything. Yeah, and yeah. I was really touched when I heard you on the radio mm -hmm. being so honest about your mm -hmm. personal struggles. Are you yeah. confident that this time round that you've kind of got the strength to cope with it? Uh, well, that's an important question because the physical side of things... I, my hero was Muhammad Ali, and he was a sportsman, so the idea... I've never taken drugs, that's the only reason I can actually do anything. Because I think that's a sort of real... The biggest problem in my business, in entertainment business in general, mm -hmm. is that. And that's because there's so much boredom. Two hours on stage, 22 hours getting in trouble. But I've always liked the work, and the work's its own reward for me. Uh, I come from a Romani, Scottish background. My granddad. It's a very big part of me. I had a very strong grand granddad, Walter Albany Smith, who was a Roman, he was in the Royal Navy, in the submarines in the First World War. And he kept things very simple for me. And I've kept those, uh, that attitude in my whole life. And does work help you, know? you and keep you strong, do you think? I think work... Being busy, keeping your mind active, keeping your body active. Yeah, I think the problem is that I was sort of pretty much first encouraged to take antidepressants and then more or less forced to take antidepressants. And the thing about that is they're very useful things in an emergency situation, but they don't have the stuff. The GPs just don't have the time to mm -hmm. monitor and they're very serious. These are very serious drugs. And, and you've, you've and, been quoted yeah. as well mm. as, as saying that uh, although antidepressants work for some people, then they're, mm. they're not for everyone. They can be very mm -hmm, helpful for mm -hmm. some. Uh, we, were, we were talking earlier about the, how important it is to have friends to turn to. Would, would you say that that's something that people should do maybe first port of call, is, is talk to people? Yeah, I think you could alleviate the pressure on, on doctors because it's, it's almost like I've got a problem, I'll go and see a yeah. doctor. And, they got to do with physical things primarily, and the whole mental area is something that I think one idea would be. I mean, I've got dogs, and I think yeah. why they don't have in not only old people's homes, but in 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 you know hospitals for mentally you know I'd say exhausted people, yeah. um, animals because I think they are totally mm. you know they're an they elixir. They have pets of therapy people. that go and, and visit people, but yeah, um, but not enough, not okay. you know, and. Uh, you know, just, just exercise. I mean, in these places, there are always... There's an art room, one of the places sure. I was in. There was an art room, but the door was locked. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah, I heard right. you talking about that. And you go in and nothing's been touched because they don't want to mess it up. OK. And, uh, it's... Can you, can you feel now, yeah. when you feel under pressure, have you got ways of dealing with it? What's yeah. the first thing that you would do? Well, I say no. I mean, I never said no. I, I never, I, I never ever said no, because <coughs> I was committed to a contract. I signed my life away. I signed a contract, and it was for like ten albums, in it, okay? And that's your whole career right there. Yeah. And it, it was like the old school Hollywood contract. So, if they said jump, I said how high. Now, having got out of that contract, I got my own record label, and I, if I don't want to do it, it's not. Sometimes you have to do things you don't want mm. to, but. I do things I have to do, and As if I don't want to do I'm so sorry to say that we've run out of time on this. It's your first time on Lucerman, but please come back uh, yeah. and, and have a chat with you. Good luck with your tour. It's Adam Mount, Thank everyone. You. <laughs> OK, that's all we've got time for today. Join us tomorrow. I'll be chatting to James Thornton and Theo Profita. See you at 12.30. Now, if you've missed a recent lunchtime serving of Loose Women, don't forget you can always catch up at your convenience with ITV Player. That's available online at itv.com slash ITV Player. Or, of course, if you have BT Vision or Virgin Media, you'll find the girls on demand. After the news next, it's 60 Minute Makeover.